Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and today I am joined by our amazing, amazing guest, Gabe Feza, one of our amazing clients and community members here. And I am so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's really a pleasure to be on your podcast finally. So I'm excited. I know, finally, right? <laughs> finally. So I'll give a little intro and then I'm going to let you sort of expand on that. So Gabe is doing his second undergrad degree, his honors BSc in global health with a specialization in disease prevention and health promotion. He is also a research assistant and he conducts research at the Cardiac eHealth Research Unit at Toronto General Hospital and more recently at the Global Strategy Lab at York University with the Governing the Antimicrobial Commons and Global Legal Epidemiology Research Teams. He loves to go outside, play golf. I know that you love a good walk. I do. I do. <laughs> you love a good coffee. And so let's let's sort of dive in because there are so many things about your your habits, your the things that you enjoy, and the journey that you've been on that are just so, I think, wonderful and sustainable in a healthy way and that have helped you to achieve your advancement. And you're not done yet. None of us are. But certainly, I think that there are so many things that you've worked in to your schedule, to your daily routines, to your weekly routines that I think were at least, you know, certainly during our more intensive like one-on-one sessions together Mm -hmm. that we really got into and that I was really pleased and impressed by and and they really helped your work together with me and also as you as you implemented all of the strategy that we worked on together so there's so much to say I'm so excited to have this conversation but why don't you sort of start by giving a little bit of a little bit more you know detail as to your journey and how you got to this point yeah, sure. So that was a really good introduction. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a second degree undergraduate student. I completed my first degree in psychology at York University. And towards the end of my degree, I started volunteering at the hospital. I started assisting with research at the hospital. And sort of my vision for where I wanted to go in my future became a little bit clearer. And I thought, okay, I might, I need to sort of dive into health a little bit more. And sort of the Global Health Program at York was, you know, a really great program to get exposure to those sorts of things. And it allowed me some time to sort of further develop myself in research and be able to work more closely with with my team at Toronto General Hospital, sort of getting to or just expand on some of the things that I was really interested in. So I think that's sort of where I am now. And yeah, it's been a long journey, but I've I've been, I'm really grateful for for the experiences I've had and and to be able to work with you and sort of, you know, continue to cultivate my, my advancements, you know, has been, has been really important to me. Yeah. And continue to cultivate your advancement in such an intense, intentional and purposeful way where there's so much thought and you and I have had so many really amazing, I think, foundational conversations about intention, about thought, about Mm -hmm. purposefulness in the actions that we're taking and figuring out what our next best steps are and in learning how to showcase yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I honestly think one of the, that was the thing that was lacking from my, I would say first degree is sort of, I don't know how to characterize it, but it's almost like aimlessly going through the motions of just sort of you know, being in school, being in classes, not having direction, not having sort of this, you know, this end sort of piece that you're working towards and building towards. So that's so important in in understanding where you want to go and how you want to get there. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think that why don't we start here and then this will lead to a lot of really amazing, I think, insight. So why, what caused you to reach out to me in the first place? What, what, what kind of, what were you looking for? The main thing is guidance. So the application process is so complex. There's so many moving parts and having your expertise, you know, this is, it was so instrumental to sort of have you there and help me really organize sort of my narrative and, you know, help me even identify things that I may not have, you know, recognized beforehand that were really really important to highlight not only to the admissions committees that we'd be sending these applications to, but for my own purpose and understanding, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. This is why sort of what I've done is important and and meaningful. Yeah. So can you take me through a little bit of that, you know, in terms of the work that we did in order to showcase yourself and what you do bring to the table? Because I, I remember very clearly so many conversations where you were like oh you know like I did this and maybe a little bit of that and I'd be like hold on a second you did this and that (laughs) wait a second for how long like what were you doing you know and so we had so many of these conversations where like it was you you were I think I think this happens with so many students and young professionals too where everybody's like going through the motions that everybody thinks that they need to be going through just to get to this stage where you're ready to apply to your schools and you were applying to professional schools. So in our work together, you were working on your professional applications and and you were applying to medical schools in addition to medical and graduate programs combined. That's right. And so you were in a really unique position because you had research positions, you had the the health and science background And now the question, one of the questions for you was, okay, I've done all these things and I've been doing them for years. And so how do I actually showcase what I bring to the table? And this is one of the things that this is one of the things that we spend so much of our time on because it's sometimes the hardest thing to do. So can you tell me a little bit about your experience with that process? And maybe if you remember some examples. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the beginning sort of of that process is a combination of, you know, the five-year vision that we worked on and and we did that and we did that a lot. And that's important in terms of, you know, thinking about where you want to be, you know, in five years and how, you know, how you want to conduct yourself, who you want to be surrounded by. That whole vision is super important when it comes to segueing into sort of building your CV, which I think for me was really one of the most, you know, important exercises that we did. And you were so helpful in in guiding us through that in the Apply Yourself program. I think once my CV started coming together and I started seeing the trajectory of my work over time, pulling out these themes of like, you know, patient-centered care across sort of, you know, my my research projects and my volunteer experiences and sort of the, the work that I've done with charity. It's, that was so instrumental for me in terms of really solidifying sort of my, my narrative to, you know, portray to the, to, to the admissions committee, which is, is so important. Yeah. So I'd love it if you could take me back to this really thought process around your creating your CV and showcasing yourself and how the actual regular work of doing that CV over a matter of weeks, because it's not something you can just do overnight. Mm -hmm. And so take me through how the process of actually working on your CV helped you to have these realizations about yourself. That's a really good question. It's, it's hard to, without a, and I, I'd like to just say that the guideline you gave us for the CV is just so, is so helpful and it looks amazing. It looks it's, fantastic. It's incredible. It's like, <laughs> one of, it's honestly one of the most, it's, it's one of the, you know, proudest things I am of sort of like the, the work that we've done together. And I'm, even now I'm still going back to it. I'm adding things and it's, it's super easy. 
Yeah, you're going to use it for the rest of your life. So for anyone who's not currently in Mastering Academic Applications, as part of working together, you get our, my copyrighted CV and resume templates that I've designed and perfected over the last 15 years. It's the current, it's my current format that I use, that I've used in every field and I've worked in health, law, you name it, I've, I've in academia. And it works in every single field because of how clear it is, how well formatted it is. There's no fluff, but it's clear. It's crystal clear and it looks gorgeous. Like it's so satisfying to look at. So, so that's what you're referring to as the, Mm. as, as the, as the guide. Yeah. I think once you start building the CV, because there are things that you may not have considered would be important to include on it or the way the, the, the organization of the CV helps you to understand your progress over time. And it helps you to formulate, you know, where, where you're going to go. It, it's this, it's a super important tool in conveying sort of not only the work that you've done, but also why it's going to be sort of, I guess, meaningful to you, you know, as part of the application process. So. Mm-hmm. And then. Talk to me a little bit about the use of this CV when it came to your autobiographical sketch. Yeah, that's that's super important. It's it was so easy once the CV was completed to draft up your to, to draft up my autobiographical sketch. I also had to write personal statements for those combined MD MSc programs. Talking about my research was so much easier when it was all laid out for me. And it just made the process so seamless and, and just, you know, so much more stress free because we know that that whole process is very stressful. So I was so grateful to, to have that tool sort of in my pocket while, while I was doing the autobiographical sketches and the personal statements. Yeah. And often when we, when we work on our personal statements after we've done the CV, after we've, and the, the autobiographical sketch is sort of like it, it, sort of continues to live as long as your application does. And so, you know, as you know, there are limited character counts that are that you're limited to in certain sections of the ABS. And so we're constantly going back and reworking like individual words. Mm-hmm. And so I think that also the the ability to have that CV there, to have that foundation and to be able then to unpack your experience in such a way that you're actually forced to be much more condensed about it, Mm -hmm. provides you with a lot of like stability, comfort, clarity, confidence in knowing that you have this document, you're translating it into a really strategic piece of your application, which is the ABS and strategic because every single thing about it is important because it's so limited in space. Absolutely. So the number of words that you can use, which words you're using. Remember that I, I I remember that we would like workshop, and this is what we do, right? This is the the sort of strategy behind a lot of the application is workshopping the words that we're using. Mm-hmm. And so, how did you find that experience? Because there's like there's the bigger stuff, which is the visualization, the goals that all leads us to this point where we're ready then to work on the materials. And then working on the materials and you're like staring at one word, you're like, okay, how do we condense this, these three words into this one word? And what is the word to start with? And so what was that all like for you? That was a really good process too. You're also like your expertise and just, you know, how to formulate things, how to formulate sentences properly. It, it was so helpful when it came to building the draft of the autobiographical sketch, which is what we do on sort of Excel when we you know, highlight each individual activity, timelines, especially having all that information down on, on the draft of the ABS was so helpful when it came to inputting all that information onto OMSAS, which is the medical school application sort of portal. Working with you closely on building the autobiographical sketch using the template and even our one-on-ones workshopping sort of my research personal statements that was super helpful as far as speaking about my experiences in a very professional way mm-hmm. and really the the challenge is doing it in, in such a condensed way because we only have so much space so we have to be able to get our point across with very limited characters and i found that super helpful working with you and the rest of the apply yourself team yeah so Let's chat about 
your the crafting of your personal statements, your short answer questions. Mm-hmm. How was that process for you? Because I know that something that I hear all the time from students before they work with me is it's, you know, I'm just going to leave it till the end. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to leave my written materials to the end. You know, they're not going to take that long. Like, you know, the the numbers, the the grades and the stats and the test scores, you know, that's what I'm going to focus on. And then I'll, you know, I'll put together the written materials later. What do you think about that now after having been through this experience? I think the first thing that comes to mind is do not leave your written materials until the end. I think they're, even for me, before working together, the value of the written materials, uh, I saw in similar too. And it's the power of your research statements, the power of your you know, personal statements, your autobiographical sketch. Real people are, are reading your work and reading, you know, your journey and stuff like that. So you can't, it's not something that you can just easily whip up. It takes a lot of care. It takes a lot of time to craft your story in a way that showcases who you are and, you know, why, what, what sort of sets you apart, I guess, from maybe someone else who didn't take the time to to think so cherefully about how to formulate their their ABS and their personal statements. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I've seen, you know, and and as we've discussed, I've seen this on admissions committees too, because I'm on admissions committees year over year mm-hmm. at the graduate and professional school levels. And what we see so often is students who have the grades, they have the scores, and even some of them may not, but then their written materials just are suffering from a lack of time and thought. And it's so clear because what we often see in those cases is like basically paragraph form lists of like everything that you've done without Mm -hmm. any showcasing yourself. And so that's the process that that is actually so important. That's what the admissions committees want to see is how you're showcasing yourself, how you are really unpacking the significance of the work and not the significance of the work to somebody else, the significance of the work to you. And so we had a lot of these discussions, you know, and because professional programs, medical school, law school, dental school, and others are looking for certain certain sort of categories of content to be covered. They're looking mm-hmm. for certain themes, certain frameworks to be covered within your materials. And so when we are able to take that, take your experience, which is like so beautiful in your CV, and then I begin to ask even more questions about it in order to pull out the themes and and the stuff that they're looking for, that allows you to really showcase not only yourself, but the time that you've spent, the energy that you've spent, the relationships that you've made, right? The, the work that you've done, all of that, all of that is significant. And people leave it until the end. And maybe they don't even intend to, and there's a lot of procrastination that happens because of nerves, mm-hmm. right? I don't know what to write. There are so many questions. So maybe you can share with me some of the questions that you had before we work together that now you look back on, you're like, oh, I, those were all, those were all answered. Like what were some of the questions that you had specifically that led you to, to working together? One of the major questions I had is how do I articulate my experiences? I think that's something that generally speaking, students aren't really taught how to do that, how to talk about your accomplishments in a way that's not, it's not bragging. It's sort of, it's just showcasing your journey and working with you. That was something I was really able to develop and even more nuanced things like the structure of the, of the personal, of the, of the research statement. What are they looking for when I'm talking about my research? That was, that was one of the things that we spent a lot of time on. I remember the first draft that I showed you of my, of my research statement. You said, this is good, but there's not, there's not a lot of sort of you in here. It's sort of a, you know, a regurgitation of just your, your CV. And that's not really the purpose of the research statement. It's for admissions committees, the graduate faculty to 
see what your values are, what your perspectives are, what you gain from your research and why you think it's important and why you think it's impactful. So that was, that was super important. And also where it's going, where your research is going, where it's because admissions committees, you know, it's great if you have like these big disruptive plans for the research field and for the world and no, no, no. But what can you do in a master's program that will be supervisable mm-hmm. that responds to the resources that the schools have available for you? And potentially what resources can you check out on your own in order to complement the resources that the schools have? Maybe the schools have some partnerships. Maybe there are scholarship and and other opportunities. Maybe there are grant opportunities. And so having a really clear idea of not only the research that you enjoy, which you obviously did, and that was like, that was, that it always is my advice that if you are going to do any research or anything at all in life, that you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because we spend so much time doing the thing that we don't want to hate it forever, right? We want to feel growth. We want to feel like we're on, like we are on a path. We want to have a plan. We want to have a strategy because ultimately we want that five-year goal, that 10-year goal, those milestones to happen. We want to live that life beyond our wildest dreams. Absolutely. And to get there, it takes these smaller steps. These smaller steps of like the struggle, the slog through the quicksand, through the like really heavy mud. And we're like, when is this going to be over? <laughs> but that's the majority of how of the time spent on advancement is the strategy and the slog. And the milestones are like those peaks that were like, okay, this is an indication that I'm on, that I'm, that, that I'm achieving on the way there. Mm-hmm. But the journey itself is mostly probably like 90 or 95% the slog. It is. It is. Yeah. And so when, when you think back to the process of thought that you had to go through in order to showcase yourself, what are some concrete sort of strategies that you had maybe already in place or that you implemented that that really helped you to focus on yourself and stop focusing on other people because as you know one of the main things here one of the one of our actually like our central philosophy and mission here is non-competition focusing mm-hmm. on yourself showcasing yourself And we have a zero tolerance policy for competition, competitive natured behavior, because in my experience and now in yours, you know that that doesn't get you anywhere, Mm -hmm. right? And so it's all about showcasing yourself. So what are some of the things that you worked on to stop thinking about other people? And this is a like a lifelong thing. It's not like we work, you know, for like a week and then all of a sudden we're able to stop thinking about other people. Like this is something that, that we have to work on all the time through our advancement. But in this process for yourself, what what are some of those strategies that were really helpful to you? Yeah, that, that's a really important part, generally speaking, that I'm I'm still working on it. It's not something that you yeah. perfect. It's something that you're constantly reminding okay. yourself of. That's right. And I think that the first, for me, the first thing that I had to recognize was to not worry about what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. To not worry about what other people's stats are to not go on Reddit or student doctor forums or any of those sort of websites that have that competitive mindset because everyone's experiences are unique. And if medical schools or other professional schools only wanted students with 4.0s, they would set that as their criteria for admitting students, but that's not the case. And so once I understood that, I have you know, more to offer than just a good GPA or, you know, an MCAT score. It's like, it's, these are things that I've been working towards for years. And like, I'm, and when I, when I reflect on my experiences, I'm proud that I've been able to, you know, collaborate with some amazing 
researchers and clinicians and have formed these relationships over the years. And even now, I mean, we've talked about it before, but when I started working at the Global Strategy Lab, I was a little like apprehensive because it's sort of a new, it's a new area for me. And I was, you know, am I going to be able to keep up and stuff? And, and that's been one of the most amazing experiences so far. And I just think about, I think about those things and, and you know, reflecting on those experiences what, is what helps me sort of move forward and not dwell on things that I can't change, not dwell on things that, you know, have nothing to do with my inv- advancement. And also to think, you, you mentioned this a few times in our one-on-ones, the people that we're quote unquote competing with are the people that we're going to be collaborating with in the future. So to have that competitive mindset is just, it's, it's not healthy because these are people that you know, they're doing amazing work too. Their journey is different than mine. And, you know, it's, it's hoping that one day you get to work with them, be inspired by them and yeah. And grow with them exactly. too. And, oh, you know, and, and over time. And it's so, I think that that's such valuable insight because this journey of showcasing yourself, focusing on yourself, not the competition, and really requires that we reframe the competition. Because there's this narrative that's so stuck that, you know, we are competing. There's only a certain number of spots, and I need that spot at the expense of somebody else. But the thing is that there is space for everybody in the right way for them. And so if we come at it with that mindset, that there's that the right opportunity for me is waiting for me. And the right opportunity for them is waiting for them. And we have completely different experience and maybe or maybe you have the same or very similar experience, but it means something different to you than it does to them. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that is so important in your written materials that differentiates you from somebody else is and in a good way, mm-hmm. is wh- what do your experiences actually mean to you? What does the growth mean to you? Because, okay, it's super impressive that you're working at all these amazing labs, but you can't just list them. Of course, of course. And so the piece of actually going through, and this this takes time, mm-hmm. the piece of actually going through what the experience is meant to you and like unpacking the different facets of your work, right? The the collaboration domestically and internationally, mm-hmm. the work, the patient facing work, the work behind the scenes on like the digital and the tech side of stuff, mm-hmm. the work actually preparing and figuring out your methodology with your team, then the work of publishing, right? Every single aspect of your work means something different to you in a different way. And so do you remember any of the realizations that you had about yourself in all of those different facets of your work? I think throughout our, throughout the process of us, you know, our one-on-ones and, and the group discussions, I think I was easier on myself over time because mm-hmm. reflecting on those experiences, I was able to look back and say, I've done some cool things that I'm proud of. And the time that we spent sort of like unpacking all these different aspects of the work that we've done was so helpful in 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 describing why these experiences are meaningful to me and what I've learned from them and how they've contributed to my professional and personal growth. Mm -hmm. And so that time that we spent together was super important in in developing those those ideas. Mm -hmm. And I love that you bring up the community. You brought it up a few times. And so I want to talk about your experience as part of the group sessions too, as part of that broader Apply Yourself community that we have. So we have the Mastering Academic Applications community for the cohort of students that are students, mature students who are applying to graduate and professional schools. And we have our weekly group coaching calls with those. Of course, the one-on-ones are in it our, our additional time together one on one to those calls and then we have the success society which is our advanced coaching program which you're also in mm-hmm. and so i wonder what your thoughts were bef- sort of as you were considering working together about 
joining this part, this community. And then once you got into it, what you thought and looking back, what you think now. One of the things that I thought of before, you know, us working together was the process of applying to professional programs, medical school, it can feel a little distancing when you're doing it on your own. And that was something that I really appreciated about the community at Apply Yourself was here are all these wonderful people going through the exact same thing as you are. And everyone is so supportive and kind and just a pleasant, just, it's just a pleasant time to hear everyone's stories and hear how they're also advancing. And it's sort of, it's motivating for me to hear, you know, people pushing themselves and, you know, making these gains in their applications. That, that was super important for me. Yeah. And I think that there's also so much value to hearing the strategy that we apply to to questions that other members have in our group sessions. Mm -hmm. Because every week people, our, our members can bring their questions from the previous seven days of having worked on their applications through our modules. So did hearing other people's questions and how we worked through the answers and the strategy, was that helpful to you too? Yeah, the group workshopping that we did was super helpful. Everyone's applications might be different, but hearing your feedback on how to approach certain questions, because these questions that medical schools or law schools or your personal statement questions ask, they're, they're not very straightforward. They require a lot of finesse to answer them properly. And hearing your feedback throughout that, throughout the group workshops, hearing some of the things that other you know, members came up with was, was super helpful, was super helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really love that aspect, the community aspect of this, because it helps us to, as you said, understand that there are people who are looking for that same support, who are sick of that competition narrative, who want to be supported and who want to be in a community of people who are supporting each other and who have similar, sort of similar questions that where the strategy and the feedback applies very personally, but you can also, but it's also transferable. Absolutely. Across applications, like from master's to law school to medical school and beyond, the, the strategy is totally applicable across all of us. And we see it play out in different ways, depending mm -hmm. on the person, their experience, their applications, the questions that they have. And there's so much richness to, to the community that I'm, I'm just so proud of because it takes hard work for all of the community members to come every single week and to, and to share and to be open mm -hmm. and to, and also to be open to receiving. And it's, right? a, it's, it's a non-judgmental space. Totally. Not be afraid to make mistakes, quote unquote, or show a side that you may not want other people to see, but it's, you know, it's okay to talk about certain experiences and how you think about certain things during our group calls and when we're workshopping things. And that was, that's super important. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some realizations that you had about yourself and your journey? Since we, since we started working together and since you became a part of this community. I think one of the major realizations I've had is that my, my advancement won't stop and that I'm going to continue to do things that will bring me closer to where I want to be in five years or in 10 years. It's hard to predict exactly how that's going to happen because as we know that you know, the process of applying to medical school, to law school, to graduate programs, it can be unpredictable at times. There's a certain element of luck involved in these applications. And so with that in mind, it's one of the things that I just always tell myself is just keep, keep pushing forward, keep doing what you're doing. You don't stop trying. And, and I think those values are, are things that I'm going to carry with me for, you know, the rest of my life as I'm, you know, hopefully get into medical school, you know, my graduate programs, 
and and more. So, yeah, I love that. Just keep going and and taking those thoughtful, intentional next best steps, and identifying what those next best steps are is some of the hardest work that Absolutely. we will do, and it doesn't end. Mm-hmm. Right, figuring out what your next best steps are will be different in a year than they are now, but you're still going to be having to go through the thought process of figuring out, okay, what is that next best step now that I'm at this stage? Mm -hmm. And I think there's also really, you know, you also mentioned that you're, you're proud of the work that you've done so far. And I'm so happy to hear that because so often when students first start to work with us, they would never think to say that. Because all they're thinking about is like, oh, somebody else has more than I do. And so just that process of getting to this place where you can say, I'm proud of what I've done. That's huge. Mm-hmm. That's huge. No. That takes a lot of reflection and insight. It does. Uh, and we've worked intensely together yeah. over, you know, the, the three months of the program. And we've done so much work in that time, both one-on-one and in sort of the group coaching calls too. So that was so helpful for me as far as getting my applications to where I want them to be, but also doing it in a time or fashion where I'm not rushing to do things at the end. So when I came time to submit all my applications, it wasn't stressful. It wasn't this big challenge. It was just a matter of, you know, the work's already done. I'm happy with what we've done. Now it's just time to, to submit everything. Amazing. Amazing. And so final question, what is a piece of advice that you would give your younger self? That's a good question. I think a piece of advice that I would give my younger self is to not worry so much, to focus on what makes you happy, to focus on the work that you're doing and be in the moment with the work that you're doing. Not trying to, you know, we shouldn't be doing, as a student, you shouldn't be doing research because, you know, there's this sort of end thing that you're trying to get. We should be doing it because we want to connect with our supervisors, connect with our colleagues and, you know, learn and grow. I'm just telling myself to keep that in the front of your mind as you're, as you're going through this. It's a hard process, but keep that in, keep that in your mind. Yeah. Things will fall in place, I think. So that, that's what I would tell my yourself. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Gabe, for sharing all of that. I am so proud of the work that you've done and how far you've come just in terms of insight, mindset, everything is, I I see so much growth that's happened and I cannot wait to continue to support you as you build this life beyond your wildest dreams and live it. And so... Yes, I'm I'm just so proud. So any any final words? No, I just want to say thank you for for everything that you've done to sort of help me and guide me through this whole process. It's it's meant a lot to me and I've learned so much. So I really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. And we're not done. No, <laughs> we're, we're there's not. always more. There's always advancement, right? Yeah. And so yeah, there is. There's a lot more. And going through it mindfully and thoughtfully and you know in a in a way that is healthy and sustainable is what is going to get to get you there yeah absolutely yeah okay thank you so much gabe thank you thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time thanks for listening to the advancement spot podcast If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.